Mr. Luke. David. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It gosh. has been far too long. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. <laughs> I think so. I got them off of a website that said Cats for Gays, and there was little Ricky. He's fine. As long as he doesn't shit on my clothes. Huh, baby? Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. He was not having that at all. Why, why do you think that was? <sighs> He's just frustrated. He had a bad flight. What happened on the so, you know, allergies, we had to be separated. Oh, baby. He's allergic to moist towelettes. I am so excited because <clears throat> uh, this man, this man's note made me realize that I was on the right path. Um, he is an extremely talented director, producer, creator. And I'm so blessed to know him, Luke Terrell. Yes. Mr. Zimmerman. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How are you doing, David? It is so good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. This has been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming, yeah. I mean, you, you were like the first person I met in some ways out when I moved out to L.A. Really? Yeah. Uh, Did you email me before, though? What was that? Did you email me before you got to L.A.? No. I I mean, I got out to L.A. I was houseless and just sort of, uh, I mean, we can get into this a little later, but, you know, the reasoning for me being out there was to, like, finish this movie that I was working on, but I was really depressed at the time um, and just in, in a sort of strange place. The subject of the film was my good friend and he had passed away really unexpectedly. Yeah. So I didn't ever anticipate being out in LA and then there I was and I was grasping at straws, trying to find people connected to topics that I was passionate about. And just via Google search, found you and sent you an email. I mean, I sent, a handful of emails, but I don't think I got any responses really, and certainly not ones like yours. Wow. So it was a really meeting you was a really significant step in my journey. Um, and then, I mean, the the path I've been on since that, and the people that I've met through that initial encounter with you, I mean, it's completely transformed the trajectory of my life. So I owe you a lot of gratitude for that. Well, I just feel like it's extended family and we find more through as we go through the, our lives and the doors open. It's like, oh, yeah, hi. <laughs> you right. Know? right. Yeah. And I love that. I mean, that's and that's specifically the community that kind of you brought me into in L.A. is just one that is really open and warm in that way. And you can connect really deeply, really quickly with people. And I, I did that. And um in the in a time where I really didn't feel like I had a lot else going for me, it was like that's where I found a home, and that's where I first felt comfortable even being in LA. Mm. Now, now, when did you know you wanted to be a producer, a director? Um, I don't know that I even still know whether <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah. It was. I mean, it was never like a a targeted decision i didn't study film um the the first project i you know the first feature documentary i did right. was this uh film about my friend gabe and the way that played out was he i i had sort of a hobby of doing videography yeah and then he had this change in his diagnosis where he'd always been told you won't live past 25. Mm. Um, he was diagnosed as a you know infant with Duchenne muscular dystrophy 
and and that was like late 80s where they were like you won't live past your teens i met him in his early 20s and they were like you know you won't live past 25. so then he had a, a basically a checkup where they said well, we're kind of going through your charts and um we think you have some other form of md and therefore you could live twice as long as we ever thought and so he then came to me being one of his good buddies and somebody who did videography on the side and it was like hey man i you know there's a lot of stuff now happening in my life that i never thought i would see happen becoming an uncle and graduating college and um so he'd asked me to just sort of casually film like home videos mm. and so we started doing that and then um it just you know people would be asking us questions why are we filming and we you know then we tell them that story and the reactions that they had and so it was actually Gabe's idea initially he was like it's like what if we like made this into a bigger thing and so I was like yeah I mean I don't really know what I'm doing but if you're you know there with me like let's try it out yeah and it was just a sort of organic process of evolving into what then became you know a four-year filmmaking journey together right. um and so then you know I, I alluded to this earlier but when he then did unexpectedly pass away yeah. the movie wasn't quite done and the thing that was missing was the score mm. and i had a friend from college who lived in la who's composer and he had always agreed to do the score we just hadn't done it yet and so i drove out to la and so initially i was you know crashed with him while he would work on the score, I was like, this is the only thing that matters in my life now is working on this film and sort of solidifying the legacy piece that it's now become for my friend Gabe. Um, and so all that mattered was doing what had to be done to finish that project. Um, and that brought me out to LA and that introduced me to other people and brought me a little deeper into the industry. Um, and so, uh, you know, even since then, there hasn't really been a time where I've, I've said, I need to like make a project. What should I do? It's always been stuff that's brought to me. Hmm. And it just happens to align with, you know, passions of mine, certain, you know, topics of interest, and, and also like my timeline of availability. And, um, and I'm, I feel really grateful for that, that I've had this opportunity to work on a lot of projects up to this point that have all, for the most part, organically presented themselves. Right. Well, I mean, you have you have several documentaries in the works I could see on IMDb, and I've talked to you about one of them. And I mean, and and then you have this other um, amazing film that is a short, and I mean, it's truly extra special. And that's the name of it. <laughs> How did you like that read of it? Well done. <laughs> I'm hired. Um, no. <laughs> and just for everybody to know, we have um, we have two. We have the star of Extra Special here, and we also have someone else who worked on it with him coming on. We have. Let's see. We'll admit them. We'll admit them all. Yes, there is the star of Extra Special uh, and the lovely uh, Elizabeth Reichardt. And Hello. there is Andy Arias. Hi, Andy. Hi. Andy. Hi. It's Miss Zoom you. time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, I'm like multitasking. So I'm like, if they're late, I'm going to finish my report. And then I will be back, but I am here. I am living for this. In all the glitter. You yeah, yeah, always glitter. There's, there's nothing without glitter. That is my motto. That yeah. Is, that is what I, yeah. You know, Luke and I were talking about also how, how we met and how, you know, it's just the doors open and there's another family member that we didn't know we had kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I consider Andy family, and and now Elizabeth. The door has now opened, so it's it's you know, Andy. How long have I, we known each other? 
a long time. We were not going to put a number on it, but <laughs> we've we've known each other for a very, very long time. You were a fetus. I was. I was. I think I was in grade school when we met, and I had some very um, yes. I was too. Yes, I was too. So I have to, you know, Elizabeth. I have a question uh, about uh, first of all photography. I mean, you were a stunning photographer. I was looking at uh, on your on your uh, you know your little site your sites your your Facebook, and where when did that when did that start for you? I started teaching myself photography around 2016. I've always had an interest in it, but I was uh, stuck at home a lot due to my chronic illnesses. So I decided to pick up a hobby and learn photography. I practiced on my cats. That's how I first learned how to, you know, work the camera and stuff. And then I got involved in my local drag community. That's where I really learned how to do portraiture and performance photography. Uh-huh. Learned on all of my king and queen friends. And now, yeah, I'm really interested in like adaptive fashion. I do a lot of uh, adaptive boudoir as well. I really enjoy it. I love photographing disabled people. I love my community. Now, do you, you, you're, you don't live in LA, but correct, but you come to LA a lot? I come, I'm, I'm, my goal is two to three times a year. I stay for a month at a time. Last time I was there through the month of January. And that's when I did a lot of work with the organization Runway, Runway of Dreams did their promo stuff. Right. And I got to work with some uh, disabled influencer couples as well. Oh, okay. Yes, and we missed each other because- Again, I, I don't know how this keeps happening. I was I was in Mexico, then I was somewhere, and then I- then You I was sick. In, yeah, I was sick. <laughs> and then, um, and yeah, so, but it's all good. Next time you're here- Next time. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I'm probably gonna, I'll just drop the bomb. I'll probably visit St. Louis before next time you're here. So oh, you, you can't get enough. Yeah, no, I'm so thirsty for St. <laughs> Louis and fried ravioli. Oh it's my so God. Jesus. I All the health it. foods originate in St. Louis. People don't know this. Oh, yeah, toast ravioli, gooey butter cake, all of it. Exactly. Oh my God. Now I'm hungry. No, I'm you won't a- be after a, a day old fried ravioli. <laughs> oh Where did you all meet? So I, oh, I'll just say I became obsessed with Luke a little. Like when we did, um, when he did his screening of his film. Um, yeah, uh, hey. and I'm forgetting no. the name. The other one. Right, so I was going to say, David, I mean, it all... It's crazy how it all traces back in some ways to that cold email I sent out to you because then we became friends. You introduced me to the film challenge, but then we had a work in progress screening in LA of this film that I produced, which is called, the title is Your Friend Memphis. Oh, you and, did change it. Oh, that's yeah. why I didn't say the title. <laughs> so the yeah. title is Your Friend Memphis. And we held this, you know, this work in progress screening and, and you know, specifically targeted viewers uh, with disabilities. And so you helped coordinate that, David. Andy came, you know, Tracy Gary. Turner was there, Jerry Jewell. Um, so like Tracy, I knew at that point, Jerry, I knew, but Andy, I, I did not know. So that was our, our first time meeting. Uh, and can I, can I give a little tell about us, Luke? So okay. I, 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 I like Luke then, but I was like, oh, another able-bodied person telling you. <laughs> so I was I wasn't having anything with to do with Luke and his partner because I was like, uh, and I've said this to Luke in St. Louis, so it's fine. But I was like, great movie, cute. What are these boys telling the story? And then I I knew that Luke was more involved in the disability film challenge. And so I was intrigued. I know he did Auti's film and I was like, okay, so he's not a total, like, like he's not just that guy. And so I said, I, I loved his photography. I thought it was beautiful. And I was like, I want, I want to film with him. But I, I legit told him when I got to St. Louis, I was like, so we have to have a talk about this. Like why disability? Right. And then he explained and it was this very 
like honest and real explanation of why disability matters to him. And I was, I was in after that. I mean, I, you know, cause you know, a lot of people tell our stories and I always wonder what, what's the payoff for you? Like, why us? You know, why don't you tell your own story? And I'm very like, I'm very that way. And so I, I, I talked with Luke and we had this, I think it was like an hour conversation, even before we started filming. And, and then after he explained it, I was like, okay, I get it now. And I'm, I'm, I'm like relaxed now. And then that sort of manifested into our journey. Yeah. And Andy has now been a very meaningful consultant on that film at times, um, as have other people that I've met through the film challenge. Right. Um, so Shana Garaya uh, worked as, yeah, like consulted with us on the film as well. And the way I met, oh, sorry, what were you going to say, David? No, a consultant. I think, uh, I think you brought up a very good thing because um, uh, some people like say, oh, I want to make a film about disability, but they don't, and they're, quote, in, not in the disability community, uh, and they just make a film, but they don't consult. And I think right. it's very important to know your subjects. Yeah, and I mean, that's why that screening was a really valuable moment for us too. And, you know, we were grateful for um, everyone that, that attended that and that David that you brought in. And, and then, yeah, we stayed in contact. You know, Andy, like I said, has, has been invaluable to me in various ways. But on that project, I mean, I think, there was a lot of good like feedback and even in working with the subject of our film um, who is someone who has CP, you know, at one point we put me in contact with him. Um, so, and then the other thing I was gonna say is I also met Elizabeth through the challenge because uh, Nick Navicki knew Elizabeth. Well, I don't actually know how you guys knew each other exactly. I know he his, Wife is I reached out to him. Years. I was just like, hey, oh, no. I, I'm somebody in town. Do you want to meet me? He was like, sure, because he's really cool like that. And he connected That's us because he knew you were going to be in St. Louis. And yeah, that was wonderful of him. It's been amazing working with you in all the different ways we have. You're a really good networker, Elizabeth, I have to say, because you're always like, when you're here, you're like, boom. And I'm I'm very singular focused. I don't encourage your students to do this, but I've stalked directors that I've wanted to work with. <laughs> this is not what to do, right? But this is a not what to do, and it might help you in future. But I, I literally, I've started a relationship with several directors uh, on Instagram and said, you know what? I'm in love with your film. This is who I am. This is what I do. Yeah. If you ever need someone to do anything on any of your films, I'm available. And I'm already working with two of those directors. I mean, it took two years for them to find a good project. But sometimes you got to hustle like that because in our community, and Elizabeth knows, like we are, we are our own like vehicles sometimes, right? There's agents, there's people but you and I both know that we can't rely on just the, uh, just the industry to push us. We got to push ourselves. Well, I don't, think ourselves. What, I don't think what you did, Andy, was really stalking. I think, I think <laughs> that's what we do. Well, you actually did stalk, but, yeah. but by connecting on Instagram, you know, people meet like that these days and, yeah. you know, they see that, Ooh, look at what you do. Look at what I do. Let's get together and, yeah, and I mean, we had mutual friends in common, yeah. but they didn't know me. And I, like, if I see someone that I really like, and this is how I reconnected with Luke, because honestly, after you showed me your film about Memphis, I was like, whatever. And then I, I no, I, you know, Luke, I'm too honest. That's my problem. Good. It's good. But, but I, I saw what you did at the Disability Film Challenge, and then I was like, oh, I got to reach out to this guy. And I literally, I flew to St. Louis because I'm like, I don't want to do a project that doesn't have Luke in it. Yeah. And now Elizabeth too. I don't want to do a project that doesn't have Elizabeth in it either. I have to say, I have to say your project, all of your project, 
extra special was I I wa have watched that over a dozen times and I still laugh. It's one of those films that I say, I think I'm going to watch extra special again. <laughs> it's like funny. one of my favorite short films of all time. It's, I mean, it's not only funny, it's it's so true. I, I mean, I don't know. It, Andy, I know, has had some real-to-life experiences that kind of mirror <laughs> what happened in the in the film. And yeah. it just shows, it in a lighthearted way, highlights a real problem in the industry. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have the one gay actor with CP. That's it. We don't need anybody else. We got that box checked and so we can move on. And that's not... We're not boxes to be checked. We're people with individual talents and strengths. And mm -hmm. to just be that kind of like replaceable with just a few attributes is not is not okay. Well, and you made this film in such a way that you find the humor in it, but it has such a powerful message. Yeah, the background message to, I, I don't know if my agent will listen to this, so I'll, I'll be very careful. The background, the our, I should say our agent, um, the background message to it, everybody got it, right? And they were like, was this about, and I was like, well, what do you think? <laughs> you know, like, like, I've been hustling, and David, you know, I've been hustling for, in the industry for over a decade, and people are just now saying, Oh, you're really, you're really talented. I'm like, yeah, why didn't you catch that 10 years ago when when I was just doing this? I fell into work, which I'm grateful for and I love, yeah. but I fell into work because no one, and I mean no one was seeing me. And I think Luke's film, and one of one of the ways that Luke's film is so poignant is that it's one of the one of the times that on film you get to see all these facets of an individual and people were like i want to see more of that i've gotten a, in 2021 after the film's release to date i've gotten like 25 auditions and i'm not saying it's for the film but that's like my entire auditioning you know time for like the last five years so i mean after that film yeah so 25 auditions after that film and i don't know if it has to do with the film but i know that people saw it and people were thirsty and people are like what's next for you i think the right pieces all came together i yeah. think the story the directing the cinematography the the acting, acting. i think it 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 showed you off to your glitterist I just saw your head. It just, it, you just popped and it, it was just the way it was put together. And then of course, it, the, it's off of Ryan O'Connell's special. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, to, 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 to Luke's credit, mm. it's the way he filmed the project and the way he captured the, the images of us because, you know, I've been in the Disability Film Challenge twice before yeah. and my, I wouldn't say that my films were, were bad, but the quality of this film because of the technique and the, the angles and like him pushing me to do shit that I didn't want to do because believe me, I didn't want to sit in a wet wheelchair ah, for a day. I keep on I, picturing that moment. It was the worst. And people even emailed me and was like, that was great special effects. I'm like, no, I had a soggy ass. For you know, I, oh. <laughs> soggy yeah, ass. I mean, and David, what you were saying about kind of everything coming together, you know, to me, the, the big uh, lucky moment for me was that the genre was mockumentary, yeah. which played into my strengths and just general inclinations as a filmmaker but it also just worked so well with both Andy and Elizabeth to allow them to improv and to be themselves and and then you know I was just there to capture it and then um, we worked with actually the director of your friend Memphis is is my friend David and uh, he edited extra special 
and is just really talented at, at like picking out those those best moments and putting them all together. And so it really was this sort of, you know, perfect synergy of everything coming together. But like, you know, I put the the burden on the actors to, uh, I, you know, we'd give the kind of premise, this is what has, to, you know, and this is what needs to come through. And this is the sort of general line, but like make it yours. Mm. And I mean, like Elizabeth's whole thing was improv. And, and her, the best parts of her, uh, her whole take, like didn't make the final cut because we just didn't have the time, you know? I'm so proud to... of it though. I have him send it to you. I'm so proud of it's, the stuff it's that incredible. didn't make it. She was, and this was, you know, I was just, that was the first day that I met you, right? It was on mm-hmm. the set. So, um, so I didn't really, you know, I didn't know what the chemistry was going to be like. I didn't know what her skill set was going to be like. And it was just like above and beyond all expectations and, yeah. And then, you know, with Andy, I think there was just a lot of, a lot of buy-in of each other where like, I really bought into his talent and let him do his thing. And he bought into, you know, my skill set and allowing me to do my thing. And so giving each other that creative space, I thought made for a really fun, I mean, it was a really enjoyable experience too. Right. And like, that's, well, I think that, I mean, it shows, it shows when, and you know, as an audience, you watch it, you just like, can I, okay, I'm going to rewind and watch that again. So it's in the festivals now, correct? Yeah, we're in New York um, abilities, uh, real abilities right now. Mm-hmm. And it's been, we, I won best actor in a Vegas one. Um, thank you. And mm-hmm. I won a couple, a couple other ones. It's been running around the festival circuit. So I'm really excited about it i hope that we get to do this again for 2022 um and and figure out extra special too (laughs) no all something related um but just working with this team i really like i don't i don't put my life on hold for any other people like i would do for elizabeth or luke i don't I would if they called me and said we're filming something I need you to I'd be like okay getting on a plane and going because now there's that trust of like let's just do it and you did this in the pandemic that's what it is though it's trust Luke Luke has a, a real ability to pull out this elevated authenticity Mm-hmm. and um he tr- he puts the trust in us that we will give him what he needs and we put trust in him that he'll get what he needs and it's just it's such it's you have to have trust in each other which is what i learned on that set is it's that's like the basis of all of it is mm-hmm. trusting the director trusting the other actors and i regularly forget that we were doing this for the disability the the film festival i I see it. I always just think like we were doing a short film just for like actual like short film. Like I don't I don't know how to explain it. It just seems it's the way he, that our talents were pulled out mm. was just so impressive to me to the point that it took me a very long time to realize Andy is not his character. He's a little bit his character. But but I was convinced that that was just who he was because that's what who he was the whole time I was around him. And it took a very long time for me to realize that like, oh, that was that was a character he was playing yeah. because we were able to have that, like an elevated authenticity is what I think it is. It's who we are, just like a little bit ex- extra. <laughs> It brought out it brought out aspects of our character that we got to play with and explore. Like I would never be that Andy like on my day to day, but you catch me after a couple of drinks on a Saturday, you'll probably get that Andy. And I remember your birthday. Yes, <laughs> I remember my birthday. But I think like <laughs> to credit to Luke, like I. I honestly, I'm so glad I didn't get to see the film because we did have, and I'll be honest, we did have moments where like my actor brain kicked in and I'm like, I don't want people to see that. Uh And I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. And this was like when we were still building the trust thing. And I love the cat moment. Oh, my Ricky, where's my Ricky? Oh Oh, my God, where is he? He misses you. He tells me every day. He didn't, he didn't really, he wasn't having it. He was like, I don't, 
who this person is. Thank you so much. But I love that. I love that he was there. Um, <laughs> but I think that like now it's like anything like I was talking to Luke about this the other day, anything he asked me to do, I'll be like, cool. Because you see something that I don't see and I want to see what you see. Mm. And that's, it's, it's rare. I've had that relationship with a director maybe once or twice in my career. Mm. And it's really great to have that, to just be like, just do you or say that, or be this character and let me take care of the rest, which is such a gift. No, he Andy. sees the world differently for sure. He's, Andy, he's, Andy, he Andy. sees it differently. Yeah, yeah. Both Andy and Elizabeth, you and Andy, you mentioned this earlier. You went, I mean, you took a few years away from Los Angeles, lived on the East Coast, and yep. that was an experience. How did that change you? And as well for Elizabeth, you work uh, as an advocate. I mean, you're as well. So, I mean, I. I literally I've worked since I've been acting and I just got the opportunity to go and work in DC and do that kind of work on a very high level. And I wasn't going to give, give like a high paying job away because Hollywood wasn't knocking on my door. Not like it is now saying Mm -hmm. we're just waiting for the right thing for you. I was like, I, I, you know, and I know many people in the industry that have working or trying to work for the last 20 years and have not been able to make that, you know, big break. And I, I said to myself, I don't want that to be me. Mm. Um, I want to have a, a semi career like Judy Human or other folks. And I, I want to live that life. And so I chose to do that. And, you know, when you live outside of L.A. or New York, it's hard for the industry to say, like, where's that guy? You know, and so, like, I went on maybe one or two auditions when I was when I was in D.C. But the thing is, is it really created a clarity for me in coming back to LA I don't feel like such a hamster anymore Mm. like before I was such a thirsty hamster where I was like oh that's gotta be me and I gotta do this and now it's like I audition and then I let it go to the universe and I don't even talk about it until I know more about it so yeah better for it I love it and Elizabeth you've been advocating for years yeah I uh, I got my start I mean way back even in elementary school I've always been interested in disability always even before I was using the wheelchair um live with some disability and felt just such a connection to the community so I would uh teach teachers on like days off how to work better with your students with disabilities when I was a little older I would teach the off the police officers in the area how to respond to mental health crises and now I give lectures to um, OT classes and different events and stuff, mostly about the models of disability and really just reframing how you see disability. It's not a negative thing. And we aren't really, the impairment's not what disables us. It's our environment is what disables us. Mm-hmm. And we have so many gifts because we are disabled. And I'm not, I'm not successful in spite of it's because of it it forces me to see the world differently and that shows in my art yeah yeah no that's beautiful Beautiful. um oh my gosh it really is this is a question for all of you um uh what inspires you i'll go um I believe that the universe is ran through love and light and and joy, right? And so if I in any way can expand on any of those things, then that's what I do through my art or through my through my policy work in DC, through my public speaking, any of that, I'm bringing light and hopefully love in one way or another to other audiences and that really that drives me um I had that conversation like with somebody you know her Karen Karen we had that conversation on last Friday 
And I was like, the reason I dabble in so many things is because that drive to create love and light in the entire world is whatever whatever vessel that is, whether it be my acting career, producing, or policy, that's what I want to do. That's why I always have sparkles around me, because it's the way I manifest and bring that forward. When um, I've photographed people before, they've, they've never seen them portrayed the way they see themselves sometimes. They, they've only seen how the rest of the world sees them. Um, and when I'm able to photograph them or their relationship in the way that they feel rather than what's put on them, their, their face when they see that for the first time in the photograph is what inspires me to be able to say, I see you and I see you how you want to be seen and I will show everyone else what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And and they see it for the first time, their face just lights up and it's it's so beautiful. It's I've had couples who are just, the whole world just kind of looks at them with pity almost, you know, but in my photos, that's, that's not what you see. You see true love, you see respect and authenticity and that's what inspires me hmm. i adore you andy you are so sweet you're gonna make me cry i'm not planning to cry on this well we need to get together and photograph next time i'm in town because i haven't gotten to photograph you yet no we do you give me a week's notice and i'll slim down just for you you're <laughs> <laughs> not be silly yeah you are beautiful what about you luke what drives you <laughs> You could say me, it's fine. But <laughs> well, outside of the obvious. Yes. Um, I, I mean, so I, you know, at this point, I'm pretty deep in the documentary world. And I just sort of, you know, I really live for stories. Um, and I think what I, what I love, especially recently of stories is, is like the, the digger, the, sorry, the deeper you dig, the the more like nuance you find in the world and, and like people's lives are so nuanced and unique and complicated and complex. And yet within that, there's always universal messaging or universal takeaways or um, universal moments. And so I really, I love that. I love finding the, uh, finding how, how unique and different we all are and how that actually reveals how connected and similar we all are. Mm. Um, and so that's what I really love being in the doc space. And, and there's obviously a lot of that specifically within the disability community too, right? Like a lot of, um, a lot of overlapping like shared experiences with really you know, unique experiences. Um, so uh, engaging in that discourse is always pretty, um, riveting too. I also am inspired by David Zimmerman's successful film, Honey Bunny, ah, which I wanted yes. to say congratulations to you for. Yes. I couldn't let this whole Meet the Biz go by without saying, I mean, talk about having an amazing festival run. Yeah. You have taken that film to incredible heights and it's well deserving and it's just really awesome to see and congrats on the, uh, the recent best documentary win well thank you you know what i am so proud of on that is that um is that it's getting out uh, i say the majority of the festivals see it as a love story it, yeah david tell me about honey bunny oh it's about this beautiful couple and their relationships, their ups and downs, their uh, make me cry again. Oh, uh, it's it's. Uh, I'll have to send you. We'll go to www.honeybunnyfilm.com, and that tells more about it. And then, um, and then you could probably see it too. There on YouTube, there there's a a version of it, but it's not the 
extended version. There's a slightly different version that's in the in in theaters, in theaters now, uh, in um, fest, film bitch. festivals now. <laughs> so um, yeah, the the wonderful Blair Williamson and Susie Q. Shallard. So um, yeah. it was initially a, a disability film challenge. Film. It was thanks to Nick Nowicki. Like, Nick Nowicki. Mm -hmm. um for doing that you know for years i was i was um always like you know in charge of throwing the uh, meet and greet uh but and i would help with certain projects casting here and there but i never did my own film and finally we were in you know this wonderful <laughs> quarantine state and i went they're doing a documentaries uh all of a sudden i i thought <gasps> just Blair Williamson came into my mind and I said, I have to do something. It just was like, and I, I went for it and it, everything came together. Every, yeah. the, the director had some footage on him. I had footage on him from, from our breath collections. And we, we created this beautiful love story. And it's, it's the love that I hope to have in my life. It's very beautiful. And thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you for bringing it up. Thank yeah, you. Anna. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. By the way, you know, I mean, that's one of the things I'm most proud of. It just going for it, doing it. What for each of you in your life? What at this moment? What you're thinking of? What are you most proud of? I'd say. I mean, I'll say for me. Um, the I, I think I'm I'm proud that I've taken the path that I've taken without without feeling too uh you know regretful or, or like comparing too much because it, it hasn't been easy but I finally feel like it's sort of paying off to have gone you know I mean I've I've never had a uh I've never been employed really by a, a formal employer. I've always worked really as, as an artist and then as a caregiver. Those, that's the two ways that I've ever made a living um, and usually both at the same time. And so I, there were times where it felt that it maybe wasn't working out, but I just decided to like push through anyways and see where it would lend me or lead me and now the film Your Friend Memphis is premiering at South by Southwest in March. So that's just this huge payoff after years of work um, that feels really validating. And, and I have some other you know, projects in the works. And so it feels like it's starting to become like a more reasonable path. Cause there were a lot of times where it didn't feel super reasonable to continue. Um, so I think that's probably what I'm overall most most proud of i think and i i think for me it's more of like i've done so many things in my career in my work career and in my my acting career and when i look when i look at it now i i have such a it's it's such a gift right like I, I've been able to do so many things. I'm really good friends with so many beautiful leaders like Judy Human and other folks that have just changed the world. And I'm, I'm like a small piece of that. And we all are by what we do and what we say and who we are, but doing it authentically, like that's always been my gift. Like I like people might not always like me, but if they're authentic, people will probably learn to like me. They'll deal with it and they'll get over whatever they're going through and be like, wow, I really need to know this person. So being able to do everything that I've done in my life in our authentic presence and voice and, and just being me has been something that I've really been proud of, not having to compromise uh who I am to fit a mold right because there were a lot of times in Hollywood where I was like well shit maybe I should just do this or do that or or do that because everyone who's doing that is getting this and I was like 
no, I don't want to do that. I want to be me. And if they're not ready, then they will be someday. And I mean, I think we're right there. We're getting there. We'll be there within the next few years and shit's going to happen. So, amen. 10 years ago, my parents were looking for group homes for me. Five years ago, I was virtually homebound from my illness. And now I stay across the country for a month at a time independently. I take photographs of amazing things and really important people. And I have a career and I have a healthy family and relationships and I live independently. And I could have easily kept going the route I was going, but I chose to work on myself and I chose to have these goals. And when I, I, when I set goals with a certain type of intention, they will happen. And it might not be as fast as I want, but it will happen. And this is all because I chose to work so hard on who I am. And I chose to not be complacent and be fine with sitting on the couch watching daytime TV all day. And I wanted to be successful. And I'm just what I've become. I'm very proud of that. And you're hot. <laughs> but, I mean, let's let's just give that up, right? If 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 I was if I was a straight boy, then we'd have a problem. But I'm not. So there you go. But uh, I want to semi semi change my answer. Sure. Or add at least to it. Oh. Uh, I think actually what I'm most proud of is um, the people that I've surrounded myself with in life, right? Like, I think the, like, the community that I've, that the communities that I'm part of, that I've, that I work with, that I am surrounded with personally and professionally, that, that's, I think, what I'm most proud of. And, like, this type of moment is a testament to that. Right? Like I'm really proud to be in this type of a conversation, to the, be in this type of a setting. Um, I want to add on to something about you, Luke. Everything you do, you are centering everyone else. You do big, important things, but you are never what these things are about. You are lifting up everyone else in everything you do. What you, what you see as your role in life is to put the spotlight on other people who need it and you are the one just manning the spotlight in the dark behind the scenes Aww. and I think that's Luke did an amazing job with this film and he knew that he should not be the one in the spotlight during the ceremony he was talking a lot about that actually because he knew that this is about the disability community and that's what he wanted to focus on not his work, not himself, but everybody else. And that's how he always is. I have to say, adding on to what Elizabeth said, that I didn't I didn't feel bad that I didn't win Best Actor. That wasn't what I felt bad most about. I felt bad that Luke didn't win Best Director. Because mm. honestly, yeah. that film, to see it done and to get the phone calls that I got from people... I, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been done like that if it hadn't been for Luke and I'm I'm not getting emotional so um, and that was his goal was yeah, to that, spotlight you yeah but him. yeah but without Luke that wouldn't have happened so I was I was visibly upset that that Luke didn't win best director because I I I was okay with everything else I was it's fine you know but I really thought Luke nailed it with the direction and the uh, cinematography and everything else. And, you know, I, no offense to the winners. I love you. You guys are all my friends, but I, I really, I, my heart sort of broke a little bit when I, when I didn't see Luke's name and it, it was just, it was, that was the toughest thing for me. I, I Luke's mean, film I could have won all of the categories. That. Luke's film could have swept. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, it's really gonna be generous of you all. I mean, like, as much as you say this film doesn't happen without me, like, it obviously doesn't happen without 
you, Andy. It doesn't even happen without you, Elizabeth. Like, but that that is the beauty of the challenge is that it, it it's like, I remember the first challenge I did, I sort of had this team in mind. Yeah. And then I went to your event at um, PSW, mm. David, and a, you know, a bunch of people came up to me after and they were like, oh, you're making a film. Can I be a part of it? Can I be a part of it? I was sort of like, well, I kind of have the team already, you know, like I, like how, how could I incorporate more? And I was like, well, what is the point of this challenge? The point of the challenge is inclusivity and like, let's collaborate. Let's like have everyone's voice count. Um, is, is that? Sorry, that's, that's me. Heavy. Of course, another agent. Oh no, it's a date. Another audition. <laughs> hey, I had, I no joke, I had six last week. I've never had six auditions in one Auditions week. or dates? Wow. Um, auditions. <laughs> if they I were heard dates, six be, or something like that. He's I would be bragging partners. about them much more if they were actual dates, Elizabeth. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Aware. Yes. Um, but look, what were you saying? Yeah. So I was saying, you know, and, and so I ended up including the, the, those that wanted to, you know, that had approached me at the event. And it was a crazy shoot because, I mean, we had a cast of like 12. I mean, it was like kind of crazy, um, but it was so, it, that actually was the day, that was the turnaround day for me in LA. I was not happy in LA. That was the first day where I felt like I had a place and I felt mm. like I could make a life there. And I felt um, like I had a path moving forward was, was the day that we shot. Mm. And so that was, you know, the day that I met Tracy Turner and, and Dion and um, it was a really fantastic day um but mm. so that that to me is the beauty of it is that like any given project requires each of the people that got involved and like yeah. if if one person isn't there it's just it's something different you know and so um i now i've i've done three different challenges and i've worked with a different team every time and i've enjoyed doing that um because it creates a little family that it's like an you know irreplaceable dynamic and moment in time um although this family dynamic we might have to replace or i have to, to i have to rather. say like i've been i've been approached by several people already that said hey would you want to and i i literally said in my head god i don't want to cheat on luke <laughs> I have to, I have to see what Luke's idea is because I will fly over there and have a soggy bottom and <laughs> do whatever he wants to do if if it's if it's the right timing because honestly, like that magic with a group of people, it's hard to replicate. I mean, different different groups have different magic. But when I saw this film and saw the power in the film, the final film, I was like, holy, yeah, I got to do it again. And I, of course, with Elizabeth, because I know she's so talented and like she needs to be like a huger piece of whatever we do. And I think that, you know, and so I, I've I've put people on hold because I've said we go. I gotta, That's I gotta awesome. work it out with my St. Louis family before I d decide yeah. on anything major of of what to do next. Because I think you know that's why that's why TV goes in series because they like working with these group of, group mm -hmm. of people and they continue to do it for like seven to ten years because they want to do it over and over again. Of course, the money helps, but <laughs> but. It's always it's always good to be around that those, that family that group of people.
the cutest part is that they are <gasps> the oh. best friends. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, oh. This is that they they just like sort of tackle each other and. Oh my goodness, that's I so sweet. I need a sweet. good friend to tackle me. They're like sleeping on top of one another and oh. yeah, look at that. Like, look at that. Just, like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> it does not always work out that way. You're very lucky. I know. Wow. And the, the, the dog's name is Eleanor and the cat's name is Rigby. <laughs> oh, I love it. Look at this. Look how cute that is. Boy, oh girl, goodness. two girls. Eleanor is, is a girl and Rigby is a boy. Oh, I love it. Yeah.